Game Boy Advance. Now you're playing with power or not, as the case may be. Hi and welcome back to the shed. I'm Joe Bleeps and yes, this is yet another Game Boy Advance video. Not only that, but it's a Game Boy Advance video about one that won't work and I need to try and resurrect. But this time it's a slightly different method. So this Game Boy Advance is a classic. It's in the original purple color. It's in great condition but it doesn't power up. So I got one of the capacitor kits from Z Labs thinking it was gonna be the same problem as I had in my previous issue, which I will link the video to if you haven't seen it already. However, when I came to open it up, it turns out that there had been a reasonably significant battery leak in the past and there was a lot of corrosion inside and around the switch. So what I had to try and do was repair the switch. So watch the video and see how I got on with that. All right, so this Game Boy Advance is not powering up. And although I have got a capacitor kit ready to install in it, I think it could be an issue with the battery connector. So I opened it up and having taken the back off there, this has suffered a leak from the batteries around here. You can see there's a lot of bits that have kind of corroded around here. So what I want to do is check for continuity, particularly with the switch. Before I try swapping the capacitors out, what I want to try and do is clean up all of this corrosion. I have got this cider vinegar, which has worked really well on stuff in the past. But what I've also got is a Game Boy Advance that works. This one is my one with a AGS 101 screen inside it, but we're not bothered about the screen today. We're just bothered about this area of the motherboard. So I'm going to open this up and we'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison and I'll check with the different points in terms of continuity as well. What I'm looking at here is that the switch has got a number of contacts that are very corroded and when you obviously when you switch on or switch off it either connects or disconnects those and it does feel like a lot of the corrosion is inside the switch in which case I might need to dismantle that clean up inside and put it back together so this is one that all works you've just seen me switch on so that's all tested i've got my multimeter here essentially when two metal parts touch it will beep right so on the switch there are four solder points so we've got one on this side and one on that side and two in the middle the two in the middle are connected uh, when it's switched off those three will have continuity on the right when it's switched on, the ones on the left will have continuity. So I'll just touch a middle one that's currently switched off, touch a middle one with the right hand connector. Those two work, um, but try it with the left hand connector. Nothing happens. Then when we get it to the switched on position, the central two have continuity with the on. And if we look at those connectors there, if we try touching any of those, I'm not getting anything at all. So switched off, I should be able to get a beep from all of those, but because of the corrosion on it, we've got a bit of an issue. So I'm gonna take just some cotton buds like this, dip them in the vinegar and just try and clean up these points. We'll react with that and hopefully get rid of all of that corrosion. So just slosh a load on the affected areas, move the switch to both positions and just give it time now. All right, that's been on there for a little while now. I'm just gonna use a toothbrush to just gently scrub. The contacts are starting to come up a little bit more silver than they were. Especially now I've got a better angle with the toothbrush. Let's see what's connected. So if I connect to this point on the spring with this connector, then I know that's okay. And if it's set to the off position, I should have, um, let's say those two connected, which they are not beeping, and the two middle, which are connected, and then that one there with the on switch, nothing happening obviously because it's not switched on, but if I switch on, go here, again nothing happening, so we've got a bit of an issue in terms of the connection on the switch. What I'm going to try and do is remove this metal casing from around the switch soldered on at this point and this point if i get a blade in the gap and just lift it off i should be able to remove that top bit and just dismantle the switch itself so my soldering iron is warmed up with the tip of the blade just underneath there to apply a bit of pressure heat up that point and just try and lift it off 
Right, it's been really weird how it won't lift off there. Normally when I've done this sort of thing before, I've just heated the solder and it's come off, but I think the corrosion's got in there so much that it's hard to get at the, the soldered bit. I don't know. I'll see if I can get some solder to just take to it. See, I'm in place there and the solder just does not want to take at all. Oh, that's starting to move. There we go at last. Took a little while to lift off. But we've managed to get that off there. Now even if I can't get the other side off, it means that I will be able to get in and inspect the switch. Okay, so if you look at the switch where I have sort of heated this point here and it lifts off, now I can get to the inside of the switch that part there i'm just going to bend back a bit and then put it down and in fact i'm going to bend it slightly in the middle because it raised itself a little bit when i was trying to lift it earlier now that i've got the switch exposed i can lift out this part and inspect the inside. As expected, it is very, very corroded in there, so that's going to take quite a bit of cleaning. Is it savable? I don't know. So I've put vinegar in the gaps. I'm already seeing some evidence of the contact on the inside. Okay, so on the switch itself, there's a tiny little metal connector, and that's very corroded too. Again, I'll just soak it in the first instance and then come back to it a little while afterwards. Meanwhile, the inside section now is looking much better. The gold bit's starting to show up a little bit more. Bend that part back a bit more, and then I can really get in there with the toothbrush. I'm just scraping away inside here to remove any debris from the contacts. Now obviously our two central ones, unsurprisingly, are one metal piece. Just turn it around so I can get to the other side. And you can see already now that these are looking a lot cleaner than they were. So you can see there now those contacts are much better exposed than they were to inspect the switch part itself which is still looking a little bit grubby. Now the only thing with small parts being corroded is that it can weaken the metal and we definitely don't want that. If I get my scalpel blade and just scrape across and try and... Ah oh, yeah that's coming up looking a bit more metallic now there. And here as well in this direction. Yeah, because all we need is, is that end point in contact. Quick check for continuity. If I touch here and here, see if we can get that to beep. Yeah, that, that should be okay now. And I think just to make sure the switch really engages, I will carefully lift these very slightly. Very slightly, because I, I don't want to go snapping them off. That's one side done. And the other... They're lifted a little bit. I'll check the continuity again. That's good. Right, so now what I've got to do is reassemble it, which involves taking the switch lever, putting it face down so the metal parts touch the metal on the inside. I'll bring down the connector again, heat it and add a little bit of solder at this point. And then I will take something to just apply a bit of pressure here. Keep the heat on for a while. Just secure that back in position. Just to make sure that's all secured, I will just carefully try and lift and lever it off. Oh, that's definitely in position. Just to be on the safe side, in case I did lift it up over here at all, I think it's probably sensible to do the same over here. And again, just check it's not lifting. Everything seems secure there. But is it actually working? If I put it in the off position, what I'm hoping for now 
is that the central one will have a connection with the end here, which it does. And if I move it to the other position, that will work there. Yes, right. Okay, so next test is to take it out of here, reassemble the console and see if it's done the trick. Now, normally I would put my batteries in to check, but I've got a cool new gadget that I want to try out. So I got this thing from Z Labs. It plugs into a USB power supply and then there's like two little crocodile clips, which means that you can test consoles before fully reassembling them. So if I plug this into a USB power supply, and then attach my connectors onto the negative and positive terminals. You'll hear that come on, you'll see that's on and it's powered up and flick the switch off and it goes off, off, on. Oh, what a lovely sound to hear and off. So now that works, I can disconnect my leads and I know it's safe to reassemble. Right, so that's my screws all back in place. Time to give it a proper test. So we'll put my batteries in, put the battery cover on, flip it over, switch on, and there we go. It's working. You see, this is the thing when it comes to electronics. All it takes is one slight tiny gap, one little bit that won't quite connect. And no matter how elaborate or complex your circuit, it won't work because you need that continuity for the current to flow through all the components in your circuit. And when it comes to battery corrosion, that can build up on the surface of the metals, which would normally simply have to touch one another to connect. And you've got that layer of corrosion in between, which does not conduct the electricity and then it doesn't work. So even though it's something just as simple as a switch, that can cause a console not to work. And in this case, although the switch itself is relatively simple, that amount of buildup of corrosion, um, which was really, really stubborn, can cause quite a lot of problems, not just in terms of being able to clean it up, as you saw with me being able to actually desolder the parts that were attached to the motherboard, because there was so much corrosion around those solder points. It was really, really hard to heat those up to the point where you could separate it from the motherboard. And I was really wary because you've got plastic parts inside the switch as well. And if you heat it up too much, then you melt the plastic and ruin the whole thing. So patience and perseverance is key with this. Um, only a simple component, but it took me quite a while to do, but it was totally worth doing. No extra parts needed, just a little bit of vinegar, and there you go, it's, it's all cleaned up and it works and now it's ready for me to use for my next project, which you are going to love. So if you do want to see that, please subscribe. If you like what I did there. Um, but in the meantime, if you like this one, leave a like. If you've got something to say or add to the chat, just leave a comment. And um, yeah, just thanks for your support and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.